The Sele's chitinous bodies fell by the thousands, their planet reduced to a smoldering wasteland, under unending alien bombardment, staring extinction in the face until one human fucked everything up for their enemy. Justin Lewis, a grizzled mercenary and ex-Special Forces hardass, couldn't give two shits about the Sele insectoids or their doomed homeworld when their sire father first approached him with a job. He was ready to tell the bug-eyed freak to piss off until he saw more credits in the contract than most humans earn in ten lifetimes. The Sele were getting their thoraxes handed to them by the Zorgax, a race of warmongering alien bastards who got off on turning planets to glass. But there was this old Sele prophecy about a warrior from beyond the stars showing up to save their species. The sire father figured that warrior was Justin. He wanted to pay Justin to live out that prophecy, train their troops, lead them in battle, and kick the ever-loving shit out of the Zorgax. Justin didn't buy that mystical crap, but for that many credits he'd be whatever the roaches wanted him to be. So he hopped aboard the next freighter to the Sele homeworld, expecting some half-decent troops to whip into shape for a chance to stick it to the Zorgax. What he found was the saddest bunch of broken bugs he'd ever seen. Sele soldiers wandered the ruins of their bombed-out cities, demoralized and hopeless. The sire father himself looked like hammered shit, his once shiny carapace cracked and filthy, cloudy compound eyes full of desperation. But under all that grime, there was defiance too. These aliens were on their last legs, but with death on the horizon, they'd hired Justin as a Hail Mary. Now one human merc was all that stood between the Sele and the Eternal Void. The Sele's fate, and maybe the fate of the whole damn galaxy, was squarely on Justin's shoulders. And he was going to earn every last credit of his paycheck. Justin stared at the shattered Sele forces around him, watching them shuffle through the rubble like zombies. These soldiers had seen too much death, too much destruction. Their spirits were broken, their wills shattered. The Zorgax had superior numbers, superior weapons. These Sile were fucked and they knew it. But Justin refused to let their flame die out. He'd been hired to save their species, and by God he was going to earn his credits. The ex-Special Forces Merc grabbed a jagged piece of metal and banged it against some wreckage like a gong, the harsh clanging drawing the Sele's attention. Listen up, bugs, Justin shouted, his voice cutting through the hopeless silence. You're thinking this is the end, that you're all just waiting to die. But it ain't over yet. The Zorgax think they've got you beat, but they've never fought an enemy like me before, like us. The Sele perked up, intrigued by the humans' fiery words despite their despair. Justin leapt down from his makeshift podium, getting right in their faces, I'm going to teach you to fight like they've never seen. Guerrilla tactics, ambushes, sabotage. We'll hit those bastards quick and hard, then fade away before they know what's happening. We're going to bleed them slowly until they're begging for mercy. Some of the Sele chittered nervously, hesitant to abandon their traditional ways of war. But Justin's charisma was infectious, his confidence unshakable. One by one, the Sele soldiers began to nod, a new fire kindling in their compound eyes. Over the next few cycles, Justin and his newly christened commandos unleashed hell on the Zorgax. They struck from the shadows, planting explosives on Zorgax tanks, sniping their leaders from afar, then vanishing into the rubble. The Zorgax, used to crushing their foes with overwhelming force, were baffled by these new tactics. Their supply lines crumbled, their morale plummeted as the Sele reaped a bloody toll. But the Zorgax commander, Zalok, was as cunning as he was ruthless. He studied the Sile's new patterns, analyzed their moves, and then he set his trap. Justin led his team on another daring raid, aiming to take out a vital Zorgax comm center. But as they closed in, the building exploded in a ball of plasma. Zorgax soldiers poured out from the surrounding ruins, catching the Sile in a deadly crossfire. Pulse rounds stitched across Justin's armor as he dove for cover, his Sele comrades falling around him. Zalok had anticipated their every move. This wasn't a raid. It was a goddamn ambush. Justin fought like a demon, plasma rifle blazing, his Sele commandos battling with renewed courage beside him. But it wasn't enough. 
A searing bolt took Justin in the side, burning through his armor and into his flesh. He fell, blood pooling beneath him, his vision going dark. The last thing Justin saw was the sire father, ordering the Soleil to fall back to save themselves. The grizzled merc tried to rise, but his body wouldn't obey. As the Soleil retreated, leaving him behind, Justin felt something he hadn't felt in cycles. Fear. The Zorgaks closed in, their weapons trained on the lone human ready to end him. But Justin gritted his teeth, forcing himself to his feet by sheer force of will. If this was to be his final stand, he'd make it one the Zorgaks would never forget. Justin's head swam as he stumbled through the rubble, leaving a trail of blood in his wake. The Zorgaks had numbers and firepower on their side, but he had something they didn't, a desperate, idiotic stubbornness to survive. He ducked into the skeletal remains of a bombed-out building, pressing his back against a crumbling wall. The sounds of Zorgak soldiers echoed through the ruins, closing in. Justin gripped his plasma rifle, ready to make his last stand, when a chitinous hand clamped over his mouth. His eyes widened as he found himself face to face with a group of terrified Soleil civilians. Their exoskeletons were cracked and filthy, their compound eyes wide with fear. Please, one of them whispered, a young female with a broken antenna. Don't let them find us. Justin nodded slowly, and the Sele removed her hand. The human and the ragtag group of aliens huddled in silence as the Zorgax patrols passed by, holding their breath until the danger had passed. Thank you, the young Sele female said, her voice trembling. I'm Zara. We've been hiding here since the Zorgax destroyed our city. Justin winced as he shifted, his wounds screaming in protest. Justin Lewis, I'm the poor bastard your sire father hired to save your species. The Sele exchanged nervous glances. The mercenary? We thought you were dead, an older male said, eyeing Justin's injuries. Not yet, Justin growled, but I will be if I don't get patched up. Zara stepped forward, her broken antenna twitching. We have medical supplies, let us help you. The other Soleil looked at her in disbelief. Zara, we can't trust him. He's an outsider, a killer for hire. But Zara's compound eyes were determined. He's our only hope. The sire father trusted him, and so must we. As the Sele tended to his wounds, Justin learned their stories. They were artists, scholars, musicians, not soldiers. The Zorgax invasion had shattered their peaceful way of life, forcing them to take up arms or be exterminated. Zara spoke of her family, slaughtered in the first waves of orbital bombardment. Her voice was heavy with grief, but also with a simmering anger. These civilians had lost everything, but they refused to surrender. Justin felt a strange kinship with these broken aliens. He too was a product of war, shaped by violence and loss. But seeing their resilience, their determination to cling to their heritage, even in the face of annihilation, stirred something in him. I'll help you, he said, his voice rough with emotion, not just to survive but to reclaim what you've lost, I swear it. Zara's antenna perked up, hope glimmering in her compound eyes. But how? The Sire Father's forces are in retreat. The Zorgax grow stronger every day. Justin struggled to his feet, ignoring the pain lancing through his body. We'll fight them on our terms, with the tactics I've taught and the courage you've shown me. We'll make the Zorgax bleed for every inch of your homeworld. The Sele civilians looked to one another their despair slowly giving way to determination. They had lost much, but they were not yet defeated. As Justin and his newfound allies planned their next move, the Sire Father's forces were in disarray. News of the humans' fall had spread like wildfire, sapping what little morale remained. Zalok, ever the opportunist, capitalized on their despair, launching a brutal offensive that pushed the Soleil to the brink. But even as all seemed lost, Whispers began to spread through the Sele ranks. Rumors of a ghost, a human warrior returned from the dead to lead a ragtag resistance. At first, the Sire Father dismissed such talk as wishful thinking, the desperate fantasies of a broken people. Then the report started coming in. Zorgak supply convoys ambushed, their weapons stolen. 
vital installations sabotaged, set ablaze in the night, and always, always, sightings of a grim-faced human and his Sele companions, striking fear into the hearts of their oppressors. Hope, once extinguished, began to rekindle in the hearts of the Sele. The sire father, his spirit renewed by this unexpected turn of events, rallied his remaining forces for one final stand against the Zorgaks. But Justin knew that victory would not be won on the battlefield alone. The Zorgaks were too strong, too numerous. To have any chance, they needed to cut the head off the snake. And so, with Zara by his side, Justin hatched a daring plan. They would infiltrate the Zorgaks' command ship, the very heart of their invasion force, and confront Zalok himself. It was a suicide mission, but if it bought the Sire Father enough time to mount a counter-attack, it would be worth it. As they made their preparations, Zara pulled Justin aside, her compound eyes shining with emotion. Justin, I... she began, her words catching in her throat. I just wanted to say... But Justin silenced her with a look, his battle-hardened face softening for just a moment. Save it for when we win, Zara. We've got a war to finish. Under the cover of darkness, Justin and Zara led their team toward the looming Zorgax command ship. They wore stolen Zorgax armor, their faces hidden behind the insectoid helmets. Access codes obtained from a captured scout granted them entry through the ship's airlock, the doors hissing open to reveal the sterile, dimly lit corridors of the enemy vessel. Justin signaled his team to move forward, plasma rifles at the ready. They crept through the ship, the only sound the muffled clanking of their armor. As they neared the bridge, a sense of unease crept over Justin. This had been too easy. The doors to the bridge slid open, and all hell broke loose. Zalok stood at the center of the room, a legion of his elite guards surrounding him, their weapons trained on the infiltrators. Did you really think I wouldn't anticipate this, human? The Zorgax commander sneered. Justin dove for cover as plasma bolts filled the air, his team scattering to find what little protection they could. They returned fire, the confined space of the bridge erupting into a chaotic firefight. Zara, crouched behind a control panel, pulled a Sele data shard from her armor. She jammed it into the ship's systems, her fingers flying over the interface. Whatever you're doing, do it fast, Justin yelled over the din of battle, dropping two Zorgax guards with well-placed shots. Zara gritted her teeth, overriding the ship's security protocols. With a triumphant cry, she slammed her fist on the interface. The ship shuddered, its weapons and shields flickering and dying. The Zorgax guards, momentarily distracted, faltered in their attack. Justin seized the opportunity, vaulting over his cover and charging Zalok. The Zorgax commander met him head-on, his cybernetic enhancements lending him inhuman strength and speed. They clashed in a brutal melee, Justin's raw power pitted against Zalok's augmented might. Zalok's metal fist crashed into Justin's jaw, sending the human staggering back. Justin spat blood, his vision swimming. Zalok pressed his advantage, raining down blows, driving Justin to his knees. The Zorgax commander loomed over him, his hand morphing into a crackling energy blade. A searing bolt of plasma slammed into Zalok, throwing him off his feet. Zara stood over Justin, a smoking Sile energy weapon in her hands. Get up, she urged, pulling him to his feet. We're not done yet. Rallying his battered team, Justin surged forward, overwhelming the disoriented Zorgax guards. They seized control of the bridge, the remaining Zorgax crew surrendering under the threat of Justin's plasma rifle. Justin activated the ship's communications, his voice broadcasting across the Zorgax fleet. This is Justin Lewis. Your commander is defeated. Your flagship is ours. Withdraw from Sele space immediately, or suffer the consequences. A tense silence followed, broken by the sound of Zorgax ships powering down their weapons turning to flee. But not all of them. A core of hardline loyalists, refusing to accept defeat, turned their ships to face the command vessel, preparing to attack. As Justin braced for another fight, a new wave of ships dropped out of warp. The Sire Father's forces returned at last. The reinforced Sele fleet engaged the remaining Zorgax. 
the void of space lighting up with the fire of a thousand weapons. On the surface of the Sele homeworld, the Sirefather's army clashed with the last of the Zorgax invaders, a desperate battle for the fate of an entire species. Justin, Zara and their team watched from the bridge of the captured command ship, exhausted but determined. The final battle for the Sele had begun. The final battle raged across the Sele homeworld's scarred surface, the combined might of the Sele forces clashing against the desperate Zorgax loyalists. Justin, Zara and the Sire Father spearheaded the charge, their presence a beacon of hope amidst the chaos and destruction. Justin fought with a savagery born of his newfound devotion to the Sele cause, his plasma rifle spitting death as he waded through the Zorgax ranks. Gone was the jaded mercenary, replaced by a warrior driven by a higher purpose. Each fallen Zorgax was a small measure of atonement for his past sins. Zara, her skills as a hacker and a fighter melded into a deadly harmony, danced through the battlefield, her sea energy weapon leaving a trail of smoldering Zorgax corpses in her wake. She targeted the enemy's communications and weapons systems, sowing confusion and discord among their ranks. The Sire Father, his once pristine carapace now marred by the scars of countless battles, engaged a hulking Zorgax commander in single combat. Their clash was a microcosm of the larger war, a brutal contest of strength and will. The Sire Father's energy blade flashed, parrying the commander's vicious strikes, but the Zorgax's cybernetic enhancements gave him an edge. In a sudden, sickening moment, the Zorgax commander's blade found its mark, piercing the Sire Father's thorax. The Sele leader staggered, his lifeblood seeping onto the war-torn ground. Justin and Zara fought their way to his side, their hearts heavy with dread. The Sire Father, his breath rattling in his punctured lungs, gazed up at the unlikely pair, the human mercenary and the Sele hacker-turned-warrior. In their faces, he saw the future of his people. With his final strength, he grasped their hands, his words a whispered benediction. Just in Zara, he rasped, his once vibrant eyes dimming. The fate of the Sele now rests with you. Lead them, not just to survival, but to rebirth. Promise me. Just in his vision, blurred by unshed tears, nodded solemnly. I promise, Sire Father, we'll make you proud. Zara, her broken antenna quivering with emotion, echoed Justin's vow. Your sacrifice will not be in vain. The Sele will endure, and we will honor your memory. With a final shuddering breath, the Sire Father passed, his legacy now entrusted to the two warriors who had fought so hard to save his people. Rage and grief surged through Justin and Zara like molten steel. They rose their weapons blazing, rallying the Sele forces for one final desperate push. The Sele, their hearts fueled by the memory of their fallen leader, surged forward, a tide of chitinous bodies and flashing energy blades. The Zorgax lines buckled, then broke under the onslaught. The last of the invaders turned tail, fleeing before the vengeful Sele. The battle was won, but the cost had been staggering. As the smoke cleared, the true scope of the devastation became apparent. The Sele homeworld lay in ruins, its cities reduced to rubble, its once vibrant forests now charred wastelands. The Sele themselves, their numbers thinned by the relentless Zorgax assault, gathered in shell-shocked clusters, the weight of their losses etched into their battered carapaces. Justin, his armor scorched and dented, stood amidst the wreckage, Zara at his side. The human mercenary, once driven solely by profit, now felt the burden of responsibility settling on his shoulders. The Sire Father's final words echoed in his mind, a solemn charge that he could not ignore. Zara, her own grief tempered by a newfound sense of purpose, took Justin's hand, her touch a silent promise of support. Together, they surveyed the ruins of the Sele homeworld, the magnitude of the task before them slowly sinking in. Rebuilding would not be easy. The scars left by the Zorgax invasion ran deep, both in the land and in the hearts of the Sele. But Justin and Zara, bound by their shared experiences and the bonds forged in the crucible of war, 
knew that they could not turn away. They would help the Sile recover, not just physically but culturally as well. They would work to preserve the Sile's rich heritage, to ensure that the sacrifices made by so many would not be forgotten. It was a daunting prospect, a challenge that would likely take generations to fully realize. But as Justin and Zara stood there hand in hand, their eyes fixed on the distant horizon, they knew that they were ready to face whatever the future might bring. The road ahead was uncertain, the wounds of war still raw and bleeding, but together they would find a way forward. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.